afternoon. Um, this afternoon I'm just going to do a quick um, build video for the Limitless RDTA, show you how I uh, build it, how I wick it so that we can vape without any leaking. So without further ado, let's get on with it. I'm going to use six wraps of this um, fused Clapton wire. Um, I'll show you when we get a bit closer down, but the fused Clapton wire seems to come out really well. The six wraps comes out for me about, what was it, about 0.25, which is spot on for this. So let's go down to the table and have a look at it all. Okay, so here we have the top of our Limitless RDTA. You can see it's on the reload, obviously off. Um, don't want to be messing around with with uh, an, a mod which is on before you start building on it. And um, this is completely disassembled as far as it needs to be for the building on it. So you can see all the post holes are nice and open. It's all cleaned out, which is all good. What I've done is I've pre-wrapped these coils. As you can see, they are some fused Clapton's, which are very nice. And this should come out to about 0.25 ohms. So what we do is we take our coils and then we just push them, push them through using our screwdriver if we need to persuade it at all. Okay, there we go. So that's the coil, first coil installed. Don't worry that it looks a little bit dodgy to start with. We will clean that up. Um, and then what you want to do is make sure your leg lengths are about right in terms of the, the distance between the coil itself and the post holes. Obviously you don't want them too close in, but you don't want them too far out because otherwise they will short out on your atomizer. Tighten those up. Let's Make sure this is nicely in focus still, sorry. These post um, screws aren't actually the best post screws I've found. Um, they do tend to be a little bit um, easy to strip. But yeah, there we go. So there's our um, installed um, coil. That's what it should look like. Um, I'm going to tidy that up just a little bit. All right, okay, so tidy up just, just a touch there. What we're going to do now is we're going to snip our leads. We've got them to where they need to be. And that's one coil installed. What I'll do is I'll install the other coil. So that, again, it's exactly the same technique. It's a nice, easy velocity style deck to, to build on so you don't need to worry about your coils hitting each other very much. You just need to make sure that with this particular um, device, it does, when you tighten things down, it tends to grab your leads and pull them in a little bit. So it's worth being aware. I like to take my screwdriver that I use to wrap it with, ensure that it's nicely centered where I want it, and then uh, tighten it up. Same on the other side, so you see that will start to pull. See, look, these screws are not the best. They're trying to strip on me. Okay, so I had one of my post screws strip, um, unfortunately, so I've just had to replace that. Um, but it is now properly installed as it should be, um, making sure that these are as tight as they need to be to make a good connection, especially when you've got a larger build in here, just making sure that it is fully, fully tightened down, nicely cranked down so that we're getting a good connection. Hopefully we don't strip any more. Um, so trimming that off there. Oh, trimming that end off there. 
That's our excess wire. And now we have the build installed. I like to make sure that it's just looking as well, sort of as nice as it can do. It's looking a little bit wobbly, but that will do. It's a decent space in between them. So now what we want to do is turn the device on. Put it into wattage mode. And this is so far reading at 0.22, which is probably just about where we want it to be. So what we'll do now is it's set to 70 watts. What we'll do is take our ceramic tweezers, give it a quick fire. And you can see that the coils are starting to glow. It's going to glow quite a lot actually. But you're getting some hot spots in there. Now you may not be able to see that with the with the camera. But what I'm doing is I'm pinching the coils, making sure that you're not firing it when you're putting metal in contact with your coils, making sure you just use these ceramic tweezers if you're pinching. And there we go, we should be glowing nice and evenly, like so. Them a little strum just to make sure that the wires are heating up as they should, which it looks absolutely like it is. And what we'll do is we'll just pop that off for a second, make sure there's no atomizer being read, put it back on. There we go. So the resistance is now at 0.24, so pretty much where I wanted it to be. So what we do next, we take our fully built atomizer, get rid of these tools. And I like to use the smallest screwdriver for this, but you notice I've removed this top cap here, this piece, this ring. What I'll do is I'll take some of our cotton so we take our cotton take a chunk off like so when you this much cotton but it's easier to show you with so typically I sort of cut or tear this size piece in half. Normally that works. And again. And that should be just about right. So roll up the ends as you would. And pull it through. And the same on the other side. Enough cotton is needed, but not too much. The wicking on this RDTA is, is the key bit. That might not be quite enough, but what I then like to do is measure it down to about where this is awkward. Measure it down to about where the cotton hits the side of the tank section and pop it a little trim there. Then we do the same all around, making sure that it's nice and even. Not too long, but not too short. I don't want to fill up this tank with cotton. I like to have it sat just in the top like that. So it fits into these wicks, these wick holes like that. And then 
we have the same the other side now for good measure let's just give it a little juice Just wet it down just ever so slightly so that it's a bit more malleable. You don't want your threads catching. Then we take our top cap. Place that over. Like so. And then prod that smaller screwdriver just down these wick holes so that you allow the pressure and the, the juice to wick up quickly. Then obviously we need to fill our tank. Now I find this probably the most fiddly part. The juice sometimes wants to come back out at you. And eventually, you will get to a point where you're full, so you get a little air bubble sat in the top there, and you know that you're nice and full. So then we put our top cap on, get your airflow lined up nicely. There we go. And then as a, a final part, just like to take the top off and just paint paint my coils so that we get the wicking started. Pop your top cap on. Set up the airflow that we want and give it a bit of a dust off. There we go. That's how we wick coil and juice. There we go. So that is now done and dusted. So a relatively quick process, I suppose, um, once you get used to it. Provide some delicious vapour. So that's come out at 0.24 on the RX200 running this at 70 watts, 4.10 volts. And that's an incredibly satisfying bait. Really, really nice. Just remember, <laughs> give it the lean. When you're vaping it, you may get <clears throat> just a touch of juice on the first couple of pulls, just because you've moistened those coils and they're very close to your mouth. I mean, this has got the extension cap on here, but those coils are right there. So, there we go. <coughs> that's absolutely fine. Now it's now the juice, the first bit of juice has wicked away. That's absolutely fine now. So hopefully that wasn't too bumbling, too rambling a video. You can see. <laughs> that the juice is already starting to go down, um, which is a good sign. The coils are wicking beautifully, uh, vaporizing beautifully, and the cotton is wicking absolutely spot on. This is a, what is this? It's a 70-30 VG juice, I think, or, yeah, I think it's 70-30 VG juice. But this is the kilo liquid which I was talking about in the vlog um, and it's working absolutely fine so hopefully that was useful um, if anyone has any questions on this please feel free to message me I'm more than happy to answer any questions on that and um, thank you very much for watching I'll see you again soon